In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. In, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary and Louisa. In, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth, fiat. Book of Heaven, Volume 11, Part 13. August 27th, 1915. By fusing herself in the divine will, the soul becomes filled with God and his divine qualities, and God is filled with her. I was fusing myself in the most holy will of blessed Jesus, and while doing this, I found myself in Jesus, and he told me, My daughter, when a soul fuses herself in my will, it happens as when two containers, full of different fluids, are poured one into the other. The first remains filled with what the second contained, and the second with the content of the first. In the same way, the creature remains filled with me, and I with her. And since my will contains sanctity, beauty, power, love, and so forth, by filling herself with me, fusing and abandoning herself in my will, the soul comes to be filled with my sanctity, with my love, with my beauty, and so forth, in the most perfect way given to a creature and I feel I am filled with her, and finding in her my sanctity, my beauty, my love, and so forth, I look at these things as if they were her own, and I like her so much as to become enamored, in such a way as to keep her jealously in my inmost heart, enriching her and embellishing her continuously with my divine qualities, to be ever more delighted and enamored. September 20th, 1915. The fiat must be the sweet knot that binds all the acts of the creature. Continuing in my usual state, my lovable Jesus made himself seen with scourges in his hands, touching and beating the creatures. It seemed that the scourges were extending more, and among many things, it seemed that some were plotting a conspiracy against the church, and they were mentioning Rome. Blessed Jesus was afflicted, and as though covered with a black mantle. 
He told me, My daughter, the scourges shall make the peoples rise again, but there shall be so many of them that all peoples shall be wrapped in sorrow and mourning. And since the creatures are my members, I am wrapped in black because of them. I was all dismayed, and I prayed him to placate himself. And he, to cheer me, told me, My daughter, the fiat must be the sweet knot that shall bind all your acts. So my will and yours shall form the knot, and know that every thought, word, act, done, as tied to my will, is one more channel of communication that opens between myself and the creature. If all your acts are tied to my will, not one channel of divine communication shall be closed between you and me. October 2nd, 1915. The soul tries to relieve Jesus from the bitterness caused by the sins of man. After I had suffered very much, because of the privations of my always lovable Jesus, it seemed that he came for a little while, but in such suffering has to be terrifying. I plucked up courage and drew near his mouth, and after I kissed him, I tried to suckle. Who knows, I might manage to relieve him by sucking part of his bitternesses. To my surprise, I was able to draw a little bit of bitterness out of him that other times I could not manage to do. But Jesus was in such suffering that it seemed he did not realize it. However, after I did this, as though stirring himself, he looked at me and told me, My daughter, I can take no more. I can take no more. The creature has reached the brim, and she fills me with such bitterness that my justice was in the act of decreeing the general destruction. But you arrived in time to snatch a little bit of bitterness away from me, so that my justice might still hold off. However, the chastisements shall extend more. A ah, man incites me. He disposes me to fill him and almost stuff him with sorrows and chastisements. Otherwise, he shall not change his mind. I hastened to pray him to placate himself, and he, with a moving tone, told me, Ah, my daughter, ah, my daughter. And he disappeared. October 25th, 1915, when Jesus can say to a soul, My life, my mama. Continuing in my usual state, amid privations and bitternesses, I was thinking about the passion of my lovable Jesus, and he kept repeating, My life, my life, my mama. My mama. Surprised, I said to him, What does this mean? And Jesus, My daughter, as I feel my thoughts, my words being repeated in you, loving with my love, wanting with my will, desiring with my desires, and all the rest. I feel my life being drawn into you, and my own acts being repeated. And my satisfaction is so great that I keep repeating, my life, my life. And as I think of what my dear mamma suffered, who wanted to take all my pains and suffer them herself in my place, and as you try to imitate her, praying me to let you suffer the pains that creatures give me, I keep repeating, my mama, my mama. 
in the midst of so many bitternesses of my heart, because of the many lacerated members of many creatures that I feel within my humanity, my only relief is to feel my life being repeated. In this way, I feel the members of creatures being knitted again within me. October 28th, 1915 the life and works of Jesus are seeds sown for souls to harvest. This morning, my always lovable Jesus on coming told me, my daughter, my life on earth was nothing but seeds sown that my children shall harvest as long as they remain on the same land in which I sowed these seeds. And according to their attitude for harvesting, my seeds shall produce their fruits. Now, these seeds are my works, words, thoughts, and even my breaths and so forth. And if the soul harvests them all, making them her own, she shall be enriched in such a way as to purchase the kingdom of heaven. But if she does not, these seeds shall serve as her condemnation. November 1st, 1915, Jesus wants to pour himself out in love. This morning, my sweet Jesus did not keep me waiting for too long. He came, though panting and restless, and throwing himself into my arms told me, My daughter, give me rest. Let me pour myself out in love. If justice wants its outpouring, it can pour itself out with all creatures. But my love can pour itself out only with the one who loves me, with the one who is wounded by my same love. And delirious, keeps seeking to pour herself out within my love, asking me for more love. And if my love did not find a creature who would let me pour myself out, my justice would ignite even more and would give the last blow to destroy the poor creatures. And as he was saying this, he kissed me over and over again, telling me, I love you, but with an eternal love. I love you, but with an immense love. I love you, but with a love that is incomprehensible to you. I love you with a love that shall never have limits nor an end. I love you with a love that you shall never be able to match. But who can say all the titles with which Jesus said that he loved me? And at each title he spoke, he waited for my answer. Not knowing what to say to him, and not having sufficient titles to match him, I told him, My life, you know that I have nothing, and whatever I do, I take from you, and then I leave it in you again, so that my things, remaining in you, may have continuous attitude and life in you while I remain always nothing. Therefore I take your love, I make it my own, and I say to you, I love you with an eternal and immense love, with a love that has no limits and no end, and that is equal to yours. And I kissed him over and over again. As I kept repeating, I love you. Jesus became calm, took rest, and disappeared. Then coming back, he showed his most holy humanity, beaten up, wounded, dislocated, all blood. I remained horrified, 
and Jesus told me, My daughter, look. I keep within me all the poor wounded ones who are under the bullets, and I suffer together with them. I want that you too take part in these pains for their salvation. And as Jesus transformed himself into me, I felt myself now agonizing, now grieving. In some, I felt what Jesus felt. November 4th, 1915, Sorrow of the Most Holy Virgin because of the scourge of the war. Necessity of the scourge, especially for the conversion of priests. As I was in my usual state, I found myself outside of myself, together with the Queen Mama, and I prayed that she would intercede with Jesus to stop the scourge of the war. I said to her, My Mama, pity on so many poor victims. Don't you see how much blood, how many members torn to pieces? How many moans and tears? You are the mama of Jesus, but also our own. So it is up to you to reconcile your children. And while I was praying her, she was crying. But though crying, she seemed unyielding. I cried along and continued to pray for peace. And my dear mama told me, My daughter, the earth is not yet purged. The peoples are still hardened. And besides, if the scourge ceases, who shall save the priests? Who shall convert them? The garment that for many of them covers their lives is so deplorable that even the secular are disgusted to approach them. Let us pray. Let us pray. November 11th, 1915. The souls who live in the divine will are other Christs. This morning I felt such compassion for the offenses that Jesus receives and for the many poor creatures who have the misfortune of offending him, that I would face any pain in order to prevent sin. And I prayed and repaired from the heart. In the meantime, blessed Jesus came and seemed to carry the same wounds of my heart. But oh, how much larger! He told me, My daughter, in issuing the creature, my divinity remained as though wounded by my own love, for love of the creature. This wound made me come down from heaven to earth, and cry, and shed my blood, and do all that I did. Now, the soul who lives in my will feels this wound of mine vividly, as if it were her own. She cries and prays, and would suffer anything to save the poor creature. And so that my wound of love may not be exacerbated by the offenses of creatures. Ah, my daughter, these tears, prayers, pains, reparations, soothe my wound and descend upon my breast like shining gems. And I glory in keeping them on my breast to show them to my father so as to move him to pity toward creatures. So a divine vein ascends and descends between these souls and me that keeps consuming their human blood and the more they share in my wound and in my very life, 
the larger this divine vein becomes. It becomes so large that they become other Christs. And I keep repeating to the Father, I am in heaven, but there are other Christs on earth who are wounded with my same wound, who cry like me, who suffer, who pray, and so forth. Therefore, we must pour our mercies upon the earth. Ah, only those who live in my volition, who share in my wound, are like me on earth, and shall be like me in heaven by sharing in the same glory of my humanity. November 13th, 1915 necessity for Jesus to give communion to himself before giving it to others. How the soul must offer her communion. After I had received Holy Communion, I thought to myself, how should I offer it in order to please Jesus? And he, always benign, told me, my daughter, if you want to please me, offer it as my own humanity did. Before giving communion to others, I gave communion to myself, and I wanted to do this in order to give to the Father the complete glory of all the communions of creatures, and to enclose within me all the reparations for all the sacrileges, for all the offenses that my humanity would receive in the sacrament. Since my humanity enclosed the divine will, it enclosed all reparations of all times. And since I received myself, I received myself worthily. And since all the works of creatures were divinized by my humanity, with my communion, I wanted to seal the communion of creatures. Otherwise, how could the creature receive a god? It was my humanity that opened this door to creatures and earned for them that they might receive me. Now, you, my daughter, do it in my will, united to my humanity. In this way, you shall enclose everything, and I shall find in you the reparations of all, the compensation for everything, and my satisfaction. Even more, I shall find in you another me. November 21st, 1915, man forces God to chastise him and to make himself known by means of justice. Finding myself in my usual state, I saw my always lovable Jesus for just a little, and I prayed him, for pity's sake, to change the decrees of divine justice. I said to him, My Jesus, no more. My poor heart is crushed in hearing about so many tragedies. Jesus, enough. It is your dear images, your beloved children, that moan, cry, and grieve under the weight of almost infernal instruments. And he, ah, my daughter, yet all the terrible things that are happening now are only the sketch of the design. Don't you see what a large circle I am marking? What shall happen when I execute the design? At many points they shall say, Here there was such and such city, Here such and such buildings. Some points shall disappear completely. Time is short. Man has reached the point of forcing me to chastise him. He wanted to almost challenge me to incite me, and I remained patient, but all times come. 
They did not want to know me by means of love and mercy. They shall know me by means of justice. Therefore, courage, do not lose heart so soon. December 10th, 1915. The soul must make the prayers, the works, and the sufferings of Jesus her own, so as to have in her power all the good that they produced. I was feeling so very afflicted because my sweet Jesus, my life, my all, did not make himself seen. I was lamenting. If I could, I would deafen heaven and earth with my laments, so as to move him to compassion for my poor state. What a great misfortune to know him, to love him, and to remain without him. Can there ever be a graver misfortune? But while I was lamenting, blessed Jesus, making himself seen in my interior, told me with a severe look, My daughter, do not tempt me. Why this? I told you everything so as to let you be tranquil. I told you that when I abstain from coming, it is because I have to tighten stronger chastisements because my justice wants it so. And I even told you the reasons. Before, you would not believe that it was in order to chastise that I was not coming as usual, because you did not hear that great chastisements were happening in the world. Now you hear them, and in spite of this, you still doubt. Is this not tempting me? I was shaking in seeing and hearing Jesus so severe, and in order to calm me down, he changed his look and all kindness added. My daughter, courage. I do not leave you. I am inside of you, although you do not always see me. And you, unite yourself always with me. If you pray, let your prayer flow in mine and make it your own. In this way, all that I did with my prayers, the glory I gave to the Father, the good I impetrated for all, you shall do as well. If you work, let your work flow in mine and make it your own. In this way, you shall have in your power all the good that my humanity did, that sanctified and divinized everything. If you suffer, let your suffering flow in mine and make it your own. And in this way, you shall have in your power all the good that I did in redemption. By this, you shall take the three essential points of my life. And as you do so, immense seas of graces shall come out of you that shall pour out for the good of all. And I shall look at your life, not as your own, but as mine. January 12th, 1916, almost all nations have united in offending God and have conspired against him. I was lamenting to blessed Jesus because of his usual privations, and I was crying bitterly. And my adorable Jesus came, but in a sorrowful state, showing how things shall get worse and worse. This made me cry more, and Jesus told me, My daughter, you cry over the present times, and I cry over the future. Oh, in what a maze shall the nations find themselves, to the point that one shall become the terror and the massacre of the other, such that they shall be unable to get out by themselves. They shall do things as though crazy, as though blind, to the point of acting against themselves. And the maze that poor Italy is in, how many shocks she shall receive. 
Remember how many years ago I told you that she deserved the chastisement of being invaded by foreign nations? This is the plot that they are hatching against her. How humiliated and annihilated she shall remain. She has been too ungrateful with me. The nations for which I had a predilection, Italy and France, are the ones that have denied me the most. They held hands in offending me. Just chastisement. They shall hold hands in being humiliated. They shall also be the ones that shall wage war more against the church. Ah, huh, my daughter, almost all nations have united in offending me. They have conspired against me. What wrong have I done to them? So almost all of them deserve chastisement. But who can say the sorrow of Jesus? the state of violence in which he was, and also my fright, my fear. I said to my Jesus, how can I live amid so many tragedies? Either you let me be the victim and spare the peoples, or you take me with you. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven Volume 11, Part 13 Fiat Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.